are you married but in love with someone else? <laughs> Having feelings while still married to someone else is normal. It is not godly, but it's human. Denying our feelings is denying our humanity. You don't stop liking other people just because you are married. Every married woman has had feelings for another man besides her husband. Every married man has had feelings for another woman besides his wife. We have all fallen short of God's standards. And God loves us as we are. He created us differently from ages. But you don't have to act on all our feelings. Acting on all your feelings is madness. Chasing feelings is folly. After all, the one you secretly admire may not be feeling the same way about you. So if you sense chemistry between you and someone else who is not your life partner, you have this secret lover and uh, you're burning to express your feelings and to sleep with them, I want to share with you three things for your own good and for the good of your secret lover, for their own good and for your own good. And that's why I wrote this book, Sex and Marriage Counseling. It's a very interesting book. It's available in Amazon.com. It's just for helping you navigate through your marriage well. Now, I want to suggest three things. If there is someone you admire secretly, you admire them, you desire to sleep with them, you keep thinking about them, you wish you could have them for bed, I have three suggestions for you. Number one, minimize contact with them. Minimize contact with such a person. If you keep feeding your feelings, you eventually act on them. If you keep seeing someone that you secretly admire, they will keep messing up with your feelings. And if you keep on messing up with your feelings, you eventually mess up with your marriage. The eyes are the widows of the soul. That's why Job said in chapter 31 verse 1, I have made a covenant with my eyes not to look at a young woman lustfully. I will not make the decision when I'm on bed. I will make the decision not to see the wrong pictures on magazine. I, I have made up my mind not to browse porn. I have made up my mind not to look at a naked woman or to keep seeing someone who provokes me sexually. I have made a covenant with my eyes. This is a promise not to other women, not to other men, but to me, between me and my eyes. I will not expose myself to an outcome I am not ready for. You see, Jesus warned in Matthew 5, 28, whoever looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. I add, whoever looks at a man lustfully has already committed adultery with him in her heart. So Jesus is saying, look, the thing is this, affairs don't start on the bed, affairs start in the mind. The inputs from your eyes, the visual inputs, we are visual being, what you keep seeing gets into your subconscious mind and you eventually act on your subconscious mind, on your accumulated thoughts. You act on what you keep seeing because it now becomes your thought process. So affairs start on the mind. The main sex organ is the head. The body just goes to complete the mental picture. And the head is affected by the eyes. The eyes feed into the head. Number two, if you don't wanna mess up with your marriage for your own good and the good of that person you admire, you don't want to mess up with their marriage and you don't want to mess up with your marriage. Number two, block them on phone. Yes, I know this sounds an extreme measure, but I'm saying right now, if you keep texting each other, if you keep chatting on WhatsApp and perhaps exchanging pictures and making each other feel good through the text, they trigger the chemistry inside of you. If you keep arousing your feelings through text, because every text from this person takes you berserk, you go bananas, you eventually mess up with your marriage and their marriage. If you genuinely love them, 
don't mess up with them. You don't mess up with the people you love. If you genuinely love your partner and your marriage, don't mess up with your marriage because of flirting, because of folly. The ears are the doorway to your heart. Whatever happens, what you do as a human being is what comes from your heart and from your mind. And the ears feed your heart. They are the doorway to your heart. Proverbs 4.23, above all else, guard your heart. For everything you do flows from it. Everything you do flows from your heart. The ears feed into your heart. If somebody keeps telling you you're cute, you're pretty, you're sweet, you're nice, eventually you will warm up to them and surrender your body to them and to their desires, to their cunningness, to their cunning desires. You can't have your cake and eat it at the same time. You can't keep your marriage and keep your secret admirer at the same time. So the eyes feed your mind, the ears feed your heart. The eyes are the inputs to your mind. The ears are the input to your heart. G-I-G-O. Garbage in, garbage out. Your life is a product, an outcome of what you keep feeding your mind and your heart. Your thoughts and your feelings. Your logic and your emotions. You take care of them by taking care of what you see and what you keep hearing. If you keep hearing naughty things and you keep seeing naughty things, you will do naughty things. It's that simple. So number three, number three, work on your marriage. Sometimes why we notice somebody, we were together in college or high school or we met in our place of work and they begin to preoccupy our mind. is because sometimes there is something lacking in our marriage. Not all the time. People mess up. When the marriage is 100% perfect. But sometimes the reason we admire someone else is simply because there is something we are missing in our own marriage. There is a spark. That romantic spark, that romantic fire, the flame, the blaze is dwindling away. It's diminishing. And all you need to do is to rekindle the lost love flame. Because maybe the person you admire secretly, you admire the way they talk or their mannerism. And you need to discuss that with your partner. You can spice up your marriage. Maybe you admire the way they celebrate their partner. And you can celebrate your partner so that they reciprocate. You don't seek what you can get out of your partner, but what you can give your partner and they will give it back to you. Good measure, press down, shaken together and running over. Maybe you admire the way they groom, the way they dress up. Maybe the way they put the makeup. Maybe the way that girl puts up the makeup and swings her butt. Maybe everything you admire in her. If only you can buy jewelry. Take your wife to the salon to do her nails and her hair. If you can buy her a nice outfit. You'll start seeing the beautiful shape in your wife. Lady, maybe if you can buy your husband some good outfit. Maybe if you can start celebrating him and honoring him. And submitting to him. You're going to experience the same vibes with your husband. Maybe what you admire in that other guy is the way he takes his wife for vacations or for outings. Maybe you as a couple, if you begin going out together, hanging out together, spending time together, going out for dinner together, doing stuff together, going for movies together, maybe you're going to spark that flame once more. Maybe what you admire in that person is the way they achieve their goals. They are go-getters. You admire the way they work, their, their sense of ambition and zeal. And you can bring the same at home. You can encourage each other and support each other. Life is not a sprint. It's a marathon. If you encourage each other, it's not how fast we run. It's how long we run. It's how much we can sustain it. It's how consistent we are. It's our resilience, not our speed. We all travel through life in different paces. If you can encourage each other, you can end up doing so well as a couple. You know what? You don't have to admire another person's partner. Don't take somebody else's partner. And don't lose your partner. Work on your marriage. Work on yourself. Work on yourself. Work on your marriage. Hey, if you love this video, you learned something, give me a comment. Tell me one thing you learned from this video. Please share this video with someone else. Someone you love. 
and remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel and to hit the bell, the notification bell, so that you get notified when I upload new videos. I upload new videos every week. You don't want to miss out on my latest videos. Wow. Thank you, guys. All the best. I love you. <laughs>